Oh my glasses. Uh, it's 400 and bogging a 488. Good morning. It's Thursday, which means for you, it's French Friday. And in this instance, today we're going to be talking, it feels like I should have snapped when I said French Friday. We're going to be talking about tipping in France today, whether or not you do it, when and where you do it, and how you do it. I went on a great run with Mike. Thank you, Mike, for that. It was really nice to catch up and uh, get my run on. I'm only one run away from getting my third run of the week. And also Norma Jean and Cynthia, thank you so much for jumping on Patreon. I have, I have new patrons as of the last two days. Thank you for joining. It really made my morning to get. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you guys are interested in getting camera two, which is full in case you weren't sure, I'm going to figure out how to give this away. This is only, once again, the cameras only go to patrons who want them. I also don't want to send this to somebody who doesn't want it, but uh, I'll make a post fairly soon to start that selection process. After the pin thing is over, the pin thing is going to be over by the time this posts. So if you haven't uh, voted on the pin that you want, yeah, you missed out. Sorry. But the West Coast road trip poll is going to be open for another few days. Uh, maybe even a week. It's going to be open for a while. So if you haven't voted on the West Coast road trip, please do make sure to vote on that. I will link to it below. And then uh, if you are not a patron yet and would like to be a patron, or you're thinking about it, or you want this thing, make sure you jump on board. This is going to go to, on this first round, I think it's going to be available to everybody. But on the second round, I think in the future, we're going to do it for only $3 and up or something like that. We'll figure it out. But we'll figure out exactly what the rules of engagement are going to be for this when we get to it. For now, I need to go get some information from my bank, and then I'm going to go join Natasha. We're going to get some work done, and we'll talk about tipping culture in La France. Market. So even in markets actually like this, you'll see, maybe not this one specifically, but a lot of markets where there's, especially if there's any form of counter space, they won't expect you, but they'll encourage you to tip by giving you odd amounts of change back. So like if you are expecting a 50 cent piece and they give you two 20s and a 10, they're trying to encourage you to leave one of those little coins for them. tip in a market ever uh, it's just one of those things where, I mean if you have a really good experience with somebody leave them 20 cents that'd be nice but it's kind of weird because in like a local market like this no one is going to expect it so I wouldn't I wouldn't expect what happens do you like it mm, it's kind of like cantaloupe yeah a little bit it's like but sweeter sort of touches of mango what is this called again Kaki in French. Kaki? It's Sharon fruit. Sharon fruit or persimmon. Persimmon. Kind of tasty. It's kind of crunchy. I just bought my plane ticket to go back to America, but I, I turned off the computer before that. I'm really irritable today. Poor Natasha is having to put up with me being really irritable. Just one of those moods, I don't know. Ah, just a lot going on, lots, lots, lots. But I'm um, gonna be flying back. It was cheaper to buy two separate tickets. I bought a ticket through Norwegian to Los Angeles and then from LA up to Spokane, uh, where I will go see my family. It was like 100, 150 euros cheaper than anything I could find. And actually the only things I could find were with Turkish Airlines for like 650 euros. That would have taken between 22 and 37 hours because I think you had to fly through Turkey and it was gonna be really terrible. And then this is a usual one day flight to Spokane 
that I just pieced together myself for 82 euros to fly from LA up and 430 euros to fly from here to LA. Without luggage though, which is a problem because I'm gonna bring back tortilla chips, I gotta figure that out. Keep running into these film students on the side of the canal here. So where I'm going now is a coffee shop. Coffee shops will often have tip jars out now and you can leave your change up to a euro is good. I mean, if you're feeling really generous, obviously you can leave more, but you don't need to leave much more. And that's gonna be the case for most places where you sit down to have a drink or a meal. Really for good service, you only really need to leave a euro, maybe two. That's just kind of polite. Australians don't worry. It's not offensive to leave a tip. However, if you're going to a really nice sit down place, I figured I'd talk about it before we got to the coffee shop because I didn't really want to be standing there talking about tipping them in front of them. I don't know, it seems a little bit weird. But if you're going to a really nice sit down restaurant, like a nice place, well, and by nice, I don't mean to put that much emphasis on it, but if you're looking at something in the range of like 40 to 50 euros a plate minimum, going up from that, then you might want to be thinking about leaving an actual tip of 10%. And the same is true of like a place where it's like even 20 bucks. If you're gonna drop 20 euros on a meal, you might think about leaving like a 10% tip. That's nothing wrong with that. You can look to see either on the menu or the bill that they give you, the check, uh, whether or not service is included. And that's when you can also say, okay, service is included, I don't have to worry about it. It'll be an extra percentage on the bill. Or if it isn't included, then you might think about leaving that. But again, 10%, 10 to 15%, is plenty, you don't have to go crazy and be thinking like up to 20%. I don't even know what we tip in America anymore. For all I know, it's like 50% by now, but hopefully it's not that crazy. Weird to be thinking, I'm gonna be going back to the States in a few weeks. I haven't been in the States in like, that'll make it nine months, I think, that I've been gone. I hope there's still nachos in America by the time I get back. Sounds like everything else is pretty much up in the air. Oh no. Dang it, they've opened the entrance on the other side again already. Can't win. Hoping to get some coffee before I sit down, but this looks really nice. I see film Just ended up having my phone call at Insta Freebie on this bench between Pan Am and Pavillon because Pavillon was closed. I don't know what they're doing. It said it was private or something. Even though on their website it says they opened as of yesterday, they reopened. I don't know, they were a little bit, they weren't the nicest about it. So I'm gonna meet Natasha here now and then uh, have another call with Nimit in an hour. But we can finish talking about tipping here in a second. There's always a new mosquito. There's always one mosquito floating around in here somewhere. <clears throat> and I, I haven't seen this one yet, but I've been bitten on the leg a couple times and it's November. They should all be in hibernation or dead. I mean, I, I mean it's kind of a moot point to get irritated over there anyways, because I mean, really, why do mosquitoes exist in the first place? Nobody can answer that. Okay. Welcome back there, camera, yikes. Lots of technical problems today. This thing and my computer both not being happy. So uh, the last thing on the tipping front is gonna be experiences and service. So tour guides, bellmen, um, if you are, happen to be in a hotel that has bellmen, and if you are, awesome. Those kinds of things, you definitely do end up tipping a little bit better. Taxis, a little bit, you might leave, again, you might leave a little bit, but Generally, I don't. I, I wouldn't tip in a taxi. I would tip, I, obviously I was a tour guide over the summer. Totally, uh, really appreciated all the tips that I got. In fact, I very much needed them. So the tipping on that front, if you especially, now here's the thing, if you pay for it, definitely uh, it's okay to tip a little bit less if you're paying for your tour, and it depends on the situation, of course. But if you have a tour guide who's giving like a free walking tour or something like that, where you literally just show up and go on a tour for free, that person is only making money on tips, which should be obvious, but maybe it's not. Any of those tour guides definitely do tip. If you have a good time, really, it's pretty it's pretty skeezy to like try to sneak off the tour right at the end or something like that and, and not tip somebody like that if you've been with them for a few hours. Remember, they're, they're putting their time in and they're not doing it altruistically. They are trying to make some money, so keep that in mind. But but then bigger services, like if you go on a tour boat or a bus or something like that, 
where it's kind of more of a service like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't tip going like getting on a on a tour boat or something like that because you know it's people just operating a boat. Hopefully they don't hate me for saying that. I don't know if you do tip those people. Maybe that's something you actually do, but I I wouldn't do that. So yeah, tipping here is much more tame. It's definitely not a no tipping culture. Like if you're in Australia or something like that, it's definitely not a super tipping culture like in the States. It definitely lands somewhere in the middle where you tip a little bit for the services you would normally tip at home. Unless you're Australian, then you need to tip for services you would never tip for. Um, but if you are an American, you can tip a little bit more conservatively at restaurants. 10% I think is just fine. If you don't feel comfortable not tipping, nobody's going to get upset with you for tipping. And that's one of the reasons why the French do love American tourists, even if they don't always act like they love American tourists, because Americans tip tip and that's something that will definitely open some doors for you so don't forget that and remember we talked about this earlier but the things that are going to open more doors for you when you're in France are just being able to say bonjour which means hello parlez-vous anglais which means do you speak English and merci those are big things if you can just say those things merci means thank you so if you can say oh and s'il vous plaît s'il vous plaît means please if you can say those things bonjour parlez-vous anglais s'il vous plaît and merci those things are gonna get you a long ways and they're really gonna open doors for you. If you make any effort to speak French when you're in France, you will get a lot farther than somebody who makes no effort. And you can just imagine that if somebody came into your home, into your business, didn't speak your language, and didn't make any effort, you wouldn't like that either. So do keep that in mind. Anyways, that's enough of a French Friday today. I know it was fairly sporadic and spread out over the day. I've had a pretty stressed out day and ended up having a bit of a migraine for a while. A borderline migraine. I just had a pretty bad headache and I managed to avert the migraine, but that's about it. And remember, vote for the West Coast tour. If you are in one of those West Coast cities or if you're near them, please do come out. It'd be really fun to hang out for an evening or an afternoon, whatever works out. We'll let you know. I'll give you like an actual schedule here soon. Insert, for those of you in Paris, Cheryl and I have been talking and we're thinking about holding a joint meetup on the 25th of November, which would be a week, a week, a week away. Oh my gosh. It'd be a week away. So be, we'll, we'll talk about it more, but mark your calendars. Uh, and in the meantime, I hope you have a great day and I will see you again tomorrow.